God bless you. Thank you for your undivided attention. We're streaming live our Bible study. Thank you, friends. Thank you, members of Wings of Love. This is the first Bible class of 2021. And God laid something on my heart that I felt is very important for us to think about. I'm going to be talking about sin. This is not a popular subject. It is not readily welcome. But if we are going to understand the misery, the madness, and the mayhem of our world, we need to study hermitology. Hermitology means the doctrine of sin. This world, and I am sure you will admit, is weird. People are wild and wicked, and it all can be traced back to the three-letter word, sin. And we know Satan is behind a lot of it, too. Don't let sin cause you to fear or you cut me off and you don't want to listen. Because let me tell you something. If I have a sore, I want somebody to tell me how to heal the sore of the, or the cut that I have on my body. And let me tell you something. Sin is like a sore. It's, it's like a cut. And Jesus is the cure for the cut or the sore for sin. Let me tell you something. If you're going to really understand the word, you're going to understand God, you're going to understand Christ, you need humanity as a whole. We need to study the term sin. And the Lord led me to talk about in 2021, 21 sins, which mean lawlessness, breaking the law of God, missing the mark, transgression, iniquity, 21 sins that has twisted our society. Let me read that again. 21 sins. I just want to provoke your thinking that has twisted our society. Our theme passage is in the New Testament, 2 Timothy 3, and we're going to do it in three segments, 7, 7, 7. This is part one on tonight. 2 Timothy chapter 3, begin reading at verse 1 and a few of the following verses. 2 Timothy chapter 3, put this down because we're going to come back to this, Lord willing, in our next Bible study. 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, but men shall be lovers of their own selves, coveted, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, lovers of pleasures. Look at that. More than lovers of God. Finally, verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Now, this is Paul talking to Timothy. This is an experience older, elder pastor talking to a young pastor, a young preacher. And you know, that's where I feel tonight. I'm, I'm an older pastor and I want to talk to my younger associate ministers. And I'm going to talk to young ministers here and abroad tonight, those who are listening. 21 sins that has twisted our society. 
twisted mean of a personality or a way of thinking unpleasantly or unhealthily abnormal, especially in one's belief system and thought patterns. It's having a perverted, distorted, and warped mindset. The slang tonight for twisted is messed up. And sin is the cause. The Bible says as by one man sin entered the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men. The first man, Adam, who was the first representative of humanity fell. And because of his disobedience, sin and death entered this world. But let me tell you tonight, there is hope for the hopeless and help for the helpless. By the obedience of the last Adam, Jesus Christ came righteousness and eternal life. It is because of the fall of man, because of sin, that our world is, or society, is twisted. But let me tell you tonight, my brothers and sisters, we do not have to be trapped within this twisted society. We can triumph over sin Self and Satan through Jesus Christ. This is a picture of our society. Twisted. Paul gives us 21 sins that has twisted. Are you interested tonight? Are you intrigued? I am. Our society morally, mentally, and spiritually. He said in 2 Timothy Chapter three, verse one, you need your Bible or pull your phone out or whatever a device that you use. Second Timothy in the New Testament, chapter three, verse one, this know also. Why did Paul say this know also? Because in chapter two, he gives young Timothy advice and instructions and you can read it where he told uh, Timothy to study to show thyself approved, workmen need not to be made ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Then he told young Timothy to flee youthful lust. So in order to understand the text, we have to go to the context. He want Timothy, watch this, to know what he just told him in chapter 2. He gives him advice and instructions. But then here in chapter three, he gives descriptions that in the last days, there shall be perilous times. And so, brothers and sisters, listen here. He says this know also that in the last days, perilous times, perilous times shall come. I'm going to explain this. The last days, and you will admit, I'm sure, without hesitation, that we are living in the last days. The last days is the biblical term tonight that points to the end of the present age. The days right before the return of Christ. Let me tell you, I believe it without a shadow of doubt that the Lord is coming again. Signs are all around us. You can read the 24th chapter of St. Matthew's where it says it shall be rumors of wars, wars and rumors of wars, pestilence. We're already seeing this pestilence that have entered into 2021 in terms of COVID-19. He said it shall be earthquakes and dive at different places, places that you never expected would be earthquakes. Jesus said famine. So we see the signs all around us of the second advent or, or of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Some pastors don't want to talk about this, but Pastor Jay going to talk about it. 
right before the return of Christ, the last days and the end of the world. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, this world is going to end. You remember in the Antilivian period, in the olden days, the world was destroyed by water. But now this world soon, I don't know when, I don't know the hour, I don't know the time. Be careful of these who predict the time and the day because the angels in heaven, listen to Pastor Day, don't even know. So how a preacher going to know with his limited knowledge? We don't know the t when he's going to come. We don't know the time. But he is coming like a thief in the night. Thief don't call you and tell you when uh, he or she is coming to rob you. That means sudden and unexpectedly. Perilous times mean difficult times. Raise your hand while you're listening. Don't you agree? These are difficult times. Troublesome times. Trying times, uneasy times, hard times, violent times, threatening times, and dangerous days. Perilous times. We see it on the news, we read it about it in the paper, we hear it on the radio. Watch this. And even encounter it in our own family. What pastor? Yes, even in our own family, we can see the signs and evidence of perilous times. In verse two, Paul said, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. This does not mean the normal and natural love of life and of oneself that we should all have. Let me say tonight, love yourself, but don't be in love with yourself. Because if you can't, can't love yourself, how can you love somebody else? It means self, selfishness and self-centeredness. It suggests tonight to focus upon oneself and one's own desires, one's own concerns and pleasures and needs instead of upon God and other people. You know, you know some people are so narcissistic. <laughs> That's all they're concerned about is me, myself, and I. Don't you know a lot of people have an eye problem. Huh, Pastor? You mean uh, E Y E S? Eyes? No, I'm not talking about E Y E S. I'm talking about the uppercase I. <laughs> Personal pronoun. They have a, an eye problem. Listen, the Bible tells us to love. Thy neighbor as thyself. You know why people can't love their neighbor? It's because they don't really love themselves. Some are, uh, practice self-hatred and self-destruction. It means to put oneself before wife, husband, parent, child, friend. Watch this. And even God. And to feel that everyone and everything should revolve around them. <laughs> Let me ask you, have you ever met someone like that? You can put in like or hit. Yes. I mean, heart or light. Yes, I have. Wait a minute. Let me ask you this. Or are you like that? You don't have to hit nothing. You just need to do some soul searching while you listen to this Bible class tonight. Don't think more highly of yourself tonight <laughs> than you ought to. Listen, God cannot come into the life of many people. Why? He can't come in with himself because too many people are full of themselves. 
I think something was said right there. God cannot come in with himself because you are so full of yourself. Talk back to me. Paul said people will be covetous. In other words, greedy. Excessively desirous, especially of someone else's possessions. God tonight takes care of the needy and not the greedy. They will want more and more, bigger and bigger, better and better. Watch this. Not for God's glory, but to gloat or for themselves. One of the Ten Commandments. And you need to write this down. I'm not going to have it on the screen all the time. Write it down. Exodus 20, 17. Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's house. Wife. Manservant, maidservant. In other words, you should not desire somebody else's wife or husband. Don't look down at the carpet. Come on, keep looking at me. Let me tell you something. He, he, he says, this is God now. He penned this law. Watch this. Don't covet their ox or their ass. That means donkey. Get your mind out the gutter. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not cussing. That means donkey. Listen, some people be coveting other people's wife. You don't know what kind of wife that is. <laughs> you don't know how her conduct and her behavior at home. You, then you be coveting somebody else's husband. You know, Lady J is funny. She used to say, boy, I tell you, you go ahead and leave if you want to. They get, get, get you and into their life, they're going to like, no, I don't want him. I'm, I want to give him back. We laugh about that all the time. So don't be covering somebody's wife or husband. You don't know about their character and their conduct. In the last days, people will set their sights, their focus upon money, money, money. Got my mind on my money and my money on my mind. Banking more and more. Listen. For the love of money. You know, I hear people talking all the time about money is evil. There's nothing evil about money. What do you mean? That money is evil. Nothing is evil about money. Because Ecclesiastes talking about money solves all things. I'm not saying, brothers and sisters, that we ought to worship and serve mammoth. Because you can't serve God and mammoth or God and money. You will hate the one and then despise the other. And so we need to understand, watch this. Don't you miss this. <laughs> For the love of money is the root of all evil. Money is not evil. Let me say that again. Money is not evil. Okay, if money is so evil, then throw it out there then. I bet you won't be out there long. Somebody's going to pick it up and be gone. Houses in the best neighborhoods. Some people want houses on, on a hill or, 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 or by the seashore. Furnishings and property, possessions such as clothes, jewelry, antiques, art, and vehicles. Now, don't miss this. Nothing is wrong tonight with wanting these things. Because if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. Nothing wrong with wanting a nice house, a nice car, and wearing some jewelry some nice clothes and et cetera, et cetera. Watch this. But there is a problem when you leave God out of your planning and your goal setting. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? There is a, a, a show that come on t uh, TV called American Greed, and I like to watch it. Uh, my nephew said he watched it too. He talked about it called American Greed. It's, it's interesting. You ought, you ought to watch it. That talks about people and their greed. They think they're going to get away with it. Boy, they take the money. They go buy cars and don't even know that sooner or later you're going to get caught. You might get by, but you won't get away. People try to live their life by conning and scamming and stealing from other people. Covetousness or covetous. Then Paul said, people 
will be boasters. Watch this. Exaggerators. You ever seen people just exaggerate? They don't been there. They don't done this. Oh, I know who they are. Oh, yeah, I, I, I met them. Yeah, I've been there. I've done that. Oh, I met them. You ever met somebody who exaggerates? It means show offs, <laughs> windbags, braggarts, boasts in what he has. He pretends to have what he does not have, to do what he has not done. Can I teach it tonight? Bragging may involve a job, a deal, a possession an achievement, anything that may impress others. Let me tell you something. I am not up on this planet to impress nobody. I may express, but I am not trying to impress nobody. The only person I'm trying to please and impress is God. And let me tell you something. Clothes don't make me, I make clothes. Come on, talk to me. The car don't make me, I make the car. House don't make me, I make the house. Brothers and sisters, what is it? For you to have clothes and be without God, meaning you naked. <laughs> what is you have a car and don't have God? That means you thumbing your way. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. What well, if they have shoes, don't have God? That means you barefooted because he orders our steps. Talk to me, somebody. So don't use things to define you. Things should not define us. What, sh what should define us tonight is Jesus Christ in our life. Not credit, cars, clothes, a crib, and cash. Talk to me, somebody. Listen, the world is full of boasters and braggarts, teachers who pretend to be wise. Some of them not wise. Some of them don't even have common sense. Politicians who pretend to have the solution to the problem, problems of the world. I ain't going to call them no names. Let me move on. Business people who pretend to have the product that brings health, beauty, and happiness. Even preachers who pretend to have the revelation. I got the revelation or the gifts and to be more spiritual than others. Let me tell you, some preachers need to understand it's not all preachers. Some folk in the pews is more smart and smarter than those who sit up in the pulpit. OK, that's a whole nother story. Proverbs 27 and 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Now, let me tell you something. I, I, I brag and, and I boast uh, about my son. Boy, he's good in this technology. But I'm not boasting uh, about my son and boasting about my daughter who know how to cook, bake. Uh, she can bake. She can bake some cakes. I mean, she can bake. And my, my son, as I forestated, he's good in technology. You know, and nothing wrong with that about, you know, boasting and bragging about your children. As long as you don't put that boasting and bragging before God. Come on, somebody got to talk to me. Listen, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> Paul said something else tonight that we really need to look at. He said, people will be proud. Now, I just told you about those who are bragging. Then he says, people will be proud. Proverbs 16 and 18, you need to put that down. I'm not going to put it on the screen. Write it down. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction. And an audi spirit before a fall. In other words, they will become Timothy arrogant, conceited, snobbish, and puffed up. Let me tell you something. 
I didn't write this. Proverbs 16, 17. God hate a proud look. Let me say that again. God hate a proud look. Put that down. Proverbs 6 and 17. Now, let me say as a black person. We who are of ebony hue, you should be proud of who you are. Nothing wrong with that. I am proud to be black. Some people want to be other ethnic uh, group in, in other ethnic groups. I do not. I'm proud of who I am. Matthew 23 and 12 says, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased or brought low. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted, lifted up. Let me tell you, you got to be careful when you let people lift you up because same people lift you up and let you down. You need to let the Lord exalt you. God give grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. Galatians 6 and 3 says, for if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, I didn't write it. I'm just a paper boy. Don't get mad at me. He deceiveth himself. You're fooling yourself. I don't know what you're talking about, Pastor. I'm all that in a bag of chips with the dip dip. Okay, that's good. That's what you think. Nothing wrong with, you know, that's how you feel. But I would rather for somebody else to esteem me or honor than me esteem and honor my own self. Paul said people will be proud, arrogant, conceited. Then Paul said people will be blasphemers, meaning to speak of God or something scarred in an irreverent or impious manner. You can hear it on television. You can hear it among friends. You can hear it in the marketplace. It denotes to, to slander. That means to utter damaging statements tonight that are injurious to the reputation or well-being of a person. Listen to Pastor Jay. If you can't say nothing good about somebody, shut your mouth. Don't say nothing if you can't say anything good about people. And you better be careful when you say things that are derogatory towards God's church. Scar, his word, scar, his people, Israel and the church. Don't hang up on me. It means to insult, swear, curse, assault, and be vulgar in one's conversation and communication. Listen tonight. Today there is a loss of respect for both self and others for position and authority. Wouldn't you agree? A disturbed and dissatisfied heart. See, this thing starts from the inside out. Causes people to blaspheme God and man. James 5 and 12 says, but above all things, listen to this, James 5 and 12, chapter 5, verse 12 says, but above all, I'm not going to be long tonight because I told this part one, then you got part two, then you got part three. But above all things, my brethren, this is talking to believers, swear not, neither by heaven. You need to know heaven means that's the throne of God, neither by earth. You need to understand that's the footstool of God, neither by any oath, but let your yea be yea. In other words, let your yes be yes. Stop talking about I swear. I swear to God. You ever hear people, boy, I just cringe when I hear people say that. I swear to God. You do not do that as a believer. Do not, I repeat, do not do that. Don't use that language. Yea. 
Let your yea be yea, yes, yes, and your nay, nay. In other words, no, no. If you're going to say yes, yes. Oh, yes, you did. You did, dude. I know you with him. I know you did that with her. I know you. No, I did not. Yes, you did. I, yeah. No. Stop saying, for the sake of repeating myself, I swear, I swear, don't do it. Listen to what the Bible says here in James, not Jackson. And your nay be nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. What do you mean fall in condemnation, Jane? The same condemnation, condemnation that the lying devil fell into. <laughs> so, brothers and sisters, we need to understand <laughs> that we do not have to do that to prove ourselves. You what? You believe me or not? You know, I'm no husband and wife like that. Yeah, you with him. You with him. You with him. That's what the brother's saying to the wife. Then the wife said, you with her. I'm not going to sit up here and say that I did something and I didn't. But let me say this too, sometimes you have done it. Now come on now, sometimes her and my wife have done it, but don't be getting up there swearing, swearing and all that. Don't even open your mouth. Matter of fact, don't make provision for the flesh that is sin. Sometimes just be quiet. Silence is golden. Let me move on. Paul said people will be disobedient to parents. Parents, I need you to listen in. Hear me good. That's what old Deacon used to say to me. No, now hear me good. You say that here. Children will refuse to do what parents say. Rebelling against their own parents, showing disrespect to parents, rejecting parental instructions, dishonoring parental examples. If a child tonight will not honor and respect his father and mother, who will he respect? Let me tell you something. A child coming to this earth, naughty by nature. <laughs> That's for my young people. They come into this earth. They enter this domain naughty by nature. And I'm not talking about the rap group. They come in not knowing right and wrong, good and evil, obedience and disobedience. You have to teach them what is right. You got to teach your child obedience. They don't go to the school and learn lieology. <laughs> they, they don't learn theftology. It's already in their nature to steal or to lie. You got to train them not to steal, but to work. You got to train them how to tell the truth and not lie. You have to discipline your children. I did it for Minister Alvin Jackson and for uh, Tiffany Jackson. But when I disciplined my dear children when they were young, I did it out of love. I embraced my children when I had to spank them. And, you know, they used to tell us this going to hurt me more than it hurt you. And I used to get a whooping back in the day. And I'm like, hurt me, hurt you more. No, this about to, I mean, I'm about to, this tear, it's burning. It hurt. It's painful. But I understand now because I have children. And it hurt me to discipline my children like that. But when they, when they are disobedient, you have to, even God. In the 12th chapter of Hebrews, talk about that. He chastened those that he loved. He disciplined. He scourges. He spanked. So when you're disobedient, that spanking will help you to move back to obedience. Boy, how many of y'all remember back in the day, boy, whooping? It seemed like they were beating us. <laughs> Extension cords. Then they tell you to go, go get a switch. You mean go, go get the... Uh, Instrument that you go whooping with? Yeah. Well, let me tell you. I do remember, boy, back in the day when my daddy, he was uh, a pastor, and uh, we went to the store. Had no business going to the store. You know how children are. And we thought we was going to get away with it. He had heard. We went to the store, Gloria, Brenda, and myself. He said, I'm going to, when you get home, I'm going to tear y'all up. I'm gonna, are you getting a whooping? And let me tell you, he had Brenda like this. My daddy was strong. He had Brenda up in the air like a chicken. Glory's up against the wall. He spanked her. 
and listen to what Pastor Jay was trying to do. I was down there, Lord, please, please, God, please, God, please don't let me get away. Let me tell you something. Sometimes God will say no. <laughs> Sometimes God will say no. It's still an answer. He answered my prayer, but it was no. And I got a whooping. But let me tell you, I appreciate it. Some of y'all might remember, and I'm not going to be long, how the neighbor would discipline you, would whoop you. I, it's a lady by the name of Rose Gregory. I would never, she's dead and gone. God bless you. Mrs. Gregory whooped my sister and I. Right in front of my mother. Mother said, she said, didn't your mother tell y'all not to go over there? And I mean, she whipped us. But let me tell y'all, I appreciate mama, daddy, and Mrs. Gregory, who spanked me because they kept me out of trouble. How many appreciate discipline, spankings, because it kept you out of trouble? You look at all them other friends of yours, look like they was loose. They can hang out as long as they want. Some of them not even around now. Some of them in jail. So you ought to appreciate <laughs> your discipline and your strict train training at home. Listen to what the Bible says. You got to write it down, not on screen. Proverbs 22 and 6, chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Let me tell you something. Children don't want to go to church. Oh, no, they, no, they don't. You didn't want to go. I'm going to tell you the truth. I was PK. I didn't want to go to church. But let me tell you something. My father... God bless his soul. Rest in peace, daddy. He got us up, my sister and I, to go to church. Matter of fact, we'd be the first one at church. <laughs> we'd be there, watch this, before morning worship. We'd be there uh, before Sunday school start because he would open up and he set up a little mic system that he had. had. But you know what? I appreciate it. He brought us up in church. He didn't just send us. He went with us. And so many parents send their children to church. Now you need to go with them. Then let me say this to you, husband. Don't just allow the, the, the wife to do all of the teaching and training, spiritual teaching and training. You have to do some. Then we got to lead by precept and example. You got to read the word. Our nature don't want to hear the word. Our nature don't want to pray to God. Our nature, as I for me, don't want to go to church. And I would sit, uh, Minister Alvin Jackson, but I used to call him Little Al then and Tiffany, and I would sit them down. I remember sitting in that chair. I remember so well in 2021 when I used to read that word to them. It had little pictures in it. I would read it to them. I would, watch this, deposit it into their spirit. I couldn't make them take it. But I could deposit. I could sow it. And then watch this. They, they could get in trouble. I'm not saying the preacher kids don't get in trouble. I, the preacher kids, they all. Yeah. Stop pointing the finger at the preacher kids. All children get in trouble. All of them will do something when they're out of our sight. Come on, talk back to me. But I trained them in the word. And so even if Tiffany and little Al got out there, I believe that something would, uh, would uh, uh, arise in their con uh, consciousness. And they're like, oh, yeah, I don't need to be doing this. I need, uh-uh, this is wrong. So you got to train them, teach them, discipline them. If a child will not obey his parents, those who love and care for him most, who then will he or she obey? Parents are the ones who gave birth. If the children are not loyal to them, then... The children will not be loyal to anyone. Watch this. Not to the police officer. They won't be loyal in the home. Won't be loyal, obedient in society and civilization. And let me tell you something. Listen to me before I close tonight. That the family is the foundation of society. Let me say that again. The family is the foundation of society. If you take the family out, we will have no nation, no state, no country, no city. And so, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, it's important that you start at home. Watch this. You can't wait till they get, get older. Uh, Minister Smith and I used to talk a long time ago. You're going to wait till that branch get way up strong like a tree. You can't bend it. 
You can't bend it. You can't bend a tree. You got to start bending it when it's young. Bend it then. Train them then. Teach them then. Listen while they're young. Proverbs 22 and 15. Write it down. Foolishness. Let me say that again. Foolishness is bound up. Boy, I tell you, Solomon was wise. In the heart of a child. The rod of correction will drive it far from him. Let me tell you, I used to say this all the time. A good whooping to make a fool act right. OK, let me move on. Exodus 20 and 12 says, honor thy father and thy mother. That thy days, listen, young people, don't be rebellious and hard headed may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. There are a lot of short graves as well as there are long graves. Don't, don't die prematurely, young brother, young sister, by being hard-headed and rebellious, rebellious and disobedient to your parents because your days, I used to hear my mother-in-law, as he may say, a, ch a disobedient child days won't be long up on the earth. I used to hear it said. Listen. Ephesians 6. Chapter 6. Verses 1, 2, and 3. Says children. Listen now. Obey. Obey. Obey your parents in the Lord. In the Lord. For this is right. I don't care what society says. I don't care what the world says. God said, it is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment, which with promise that it may be well, well with thee. And thou mayest live long on the earth. Let me say this before I close. How you treat your parents. Young lady, how you treat your parents, young brother, young man, young lady. One day God may let you live and you're going to have children. And what you did to your mother and father, your children may grow up and do the same thing to you or something worse. I just want you to put that in your peace pipe and smoke it. I hope your glove big enough and catch that. Paul said people finally tonight will be unthankful. No sense of gratitude or appreciation for what one has and receives. Not even thankful for the little things that you have, for the blessings and the benefits and the privileges that you have. Just unthankful. No giving thanks to God who give you air to breathe. Blood running warm in your veins. Heart beating on time. Roof over your head. Don't come to y'all. You might not be in the best of houses, but you, you got somewhere to stay. Bed to sleep in. Clothes to wear. Food to eat. Especially during this pandemic and so many don't have jobs. Come on. Watch this. Unthankful to parents. Let me tell you something. I am thankful to my mother. And I don't know if she's listening or not, but I appreciate Susie Mae Jackson. And I really believe my children appreciate their parents. Unthankful to teachers. I appreciate the teachers that I had in school. Sometimes we got a little mad when they would, you know, kind of discipline us too. But I appreciate their patience with us. Us. <laughs> Come on. Unthankful to pastors. And I know that by experience. Unthankful to friends. People don't have to be your friend. Many people feel that the world owe them something. What we call entitlement. Let me tell you, as I draw to my clothes, the world do not owe you anything. You got to go out and get it. 
Some people watch things happen. Some people don't know what's happening. Some people don't care what's happening, but you got to make things happen. And brothers and sisters, I don't know about you. You, you, ever, you ever seen somebody, you let them get in front of you. They don't raise their hand and say thank you. You open the door, they don't say thank you. We live in a society, I told you, it's twisted, where people are unthankful. Well, let me close. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 says, In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God, the desire of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, talking about the believers. Now, I'm not saying tonight that you should give thanks for the wickedness and the violence and the evil and the murder and the killing. That is not what Paul is talking about. But let me tell you, we ought to be thankful in the good times and the bad times. In times of adversity. And in times of prosperity, when you're sick and when you are well, when you're up and when you're down. Good night. God bless you. Finally, Psalm 104 says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Talking about the temple in the Old Testament tabernacle. And into his courts with praise. Let me tell you tonight. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. Let me tell you we're not in the sanctuary. But every time you get up in the morning. And your feet touch the floor. You ought to say thank you God. For another day. Thank you for life. Health and strength. Thank you that the four walls of my room were not the four corners of my grave. That's what my daddy used to say all the time. Be thankful. You can go in the bathroom and wash your own face, take a bath, brush your teeth. Be thankful that you can look over there and see that your wife is doing okay, your children is doing okay. Learn how to give thanks in the midst of people that are so unthankful. And so next Wednesday we will go into part two of the sec of second Timothy chapter three. And I want you to look at it, get a dictionary and look up these words. This is the first seven. Part two will be the second set of sevens and finally part three would be the last set of sevens. Thank you for your undivided attention. I pray that this word would help you and offer hope. There are three ways that you can give tonight. Thank you for your gifts. Uh, let me say also I'm asking every member of Wings of Love, I'm going to do it, to give a special offering. You don't have to do it tonight. You can do it tonight if you'd like. Of $21. We want to sow $21 in this year of 2021. I don't know what you want to believe God for. You want to believe God uh, for 21 days. I am. I'm believing God for 21 days. I'm not uh, uh, forcing God. We can't force God to do anything, but we can move by faith. Leave God to do something for you in 21 days. So I ask that you make that sacrifice of giving $21. Even pastor going to do it. So there are three ways. Thank you for your gifts. And I pray that your giving would not be in vain. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Dear God, our Father, we thank you for your divine word, your unadulterated word. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word shall stand forever. Help us, oh God, to take the revelation and apply it to our life. Not just to be hearers of the word, but to be doers of the word. Thank you for the listeners. I pray, God, that your word will penetrate their hearts, their minds, and their spirit to bring change in their life, to make them stronger. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. And thank God.